This morning, we are privileged to be together for this remembrance service of the Word, the Light, and the Life, who is Jesus Christ. Only last Sunday, Sunday we joyously aligned the streets of Jerusalem with palm branches, welcoming our King. Today, we prepare ourselves to walk with Him through the valley of the shadow of death. We will be participating in a service of shadows, and increasing darkness will happen. That is what the world experienced on that day when Jesus was crucified. The twelve candles represent the twelve disciples who ate the Last Supper with Jesus. The white candle there on the cross represents Jesus himself. As the disciples betray, deny, and even leave Jesus in those final hours of his life on this earth, the darkness increases. Finally, on the hill of Calvary, the truth thunders into the heart of everyone watching. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This morning, we are on our way to Calvary. Please stand. John 13, 33 to 35. Dear children, I will be with, with you only a little longer. You will search for me, but you cannot come where I am going. So now I am going to give you, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The Bond of Love.
the candle of remembrance. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the pa Passover meal so we can eat it together. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The candle of God's Lamb.
the candle of boasting. On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight all of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, Even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. The Candle of Gethsemane. Please stand. Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer.
the candle of betrayal. Please read with me. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been seen by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Please stand. The candle of prayer. sitting outside in the courtyard, a servant girl came over and said to him, You are one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little while later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And he went away, weeping bitterly. Join me in reading the candle of confession. What pain and sorrow we must cause you, God, and yet what love you pour out upon us. Forgive us our disobedience. Help us to see that our modern ways of boasting about our faith in your Son are often no better than nailing him to the cross. We, like Peter, have said, even though they all fall away, I will not. Transform our minds, our hearts, our whole being to live in full and honest commitment to Christ, our Redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. The 
candle of trial. Now Jesus was standing there before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no reply, no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. 
Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said, Look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priests and temple guards began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Then they led him away to be crucified. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God smitten and afflicted by him. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. It is he, Jesus Christ, who is our wounded healer.
the candle of the shadow of death. By this time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshiped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching.
were you there when he rose up from the dead? Oh, sometimes I feel like shouting glory, glory, glory. Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Yes, we are here because he rose up from the dead. It is Friday, but Easter Sunday is coming. In anticipation of this day of resurrection, let us celebrate the living Lord Jesus Christ. Let us eat the bread and drink the cup to celebrate what Jesus did for us. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper. You have received your cups as you came in. You have probably peeled back that top first layer under which comes or is the wafer. There is a second thicker layer to peel back under which is the actual juice for the cup. So as we prepare for that, why don't we then begin with just the prayer for the bread, the body of Christ given for us on this Good Friday. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you with rejoicing because in the midst of our mourning and sorrow, just as those 2,000 years ago, the women, the disciples, and others stood close and even at a distance to see the Lord of life, the King of all the world, go into the tomb after he was nailed to the cross, after he died, after he saved us from our sin. But Lord, the saving power has not been completed by only the death. No, you gave your body up as the living bread for us. But it is the day of resurrection which we are awaiting that sealed this victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? Lord, the sting of death, you have been victorious over it. And now we celebrate in this Lord's Supper the body which you have given on our behalf instead of me being nailed to the cross for my sin. I believe in you and you have forgiven me my sin and each one of us can say that as we believe what you have done for us. Therefore, Lord, bless this bread which we do in remembrance of you. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, a big loaf of bread, like this perhaps, and he broke it. And after he broke it, he prayed and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us take our bread. Jesus, we thank you today for your blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, and your Son came in obedience to have the sin of the world heaped upon him. Willingly, you went to the cross 
Jesus, even in the garden, even as you sweated drops of blood, you said, not my will, but yours be done. Thank you for your obedience, Lord Jesus. Thank you that our sins, though they be as scarlet, they are now white as snow because your blood has cleansed us and made us acceptable in your sight. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let's partake this morning together of the cup. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, we all, are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we remember today, his suffering, his torment, his death. Yes, his burial. And we here also are people who are living in a time of suffering of a different sort. Yes, we are ready to suffer for you as we proclaim your name, as we share the witness of what you've done for us, as we share that we may very well also be despised, rejected. We may be laughed at, but at the same time, you are giving us the courage to stand up in the name of Jesus Christ to all of the challenges that come with being a follower, a disciple of Jesus. We thank you, Father in heaven, that you have given us the opportunity to pray for one another. And as we look out over the brothers and sisters in this particular audience and congregation, we recognize, Lord, that we are struggling not only with the lack of fellowship due to this COVID-19 pandemic, but we are also suffering in our own physical bodies. There are people here, Lord, who have had surgeries, who are aged and are weakened, who have fallen and broken a hip, or whatever else may be going on internally in our lives, physically and emotionally and spiritually. Oh, Father in heaven, he was wounded for us, your son, for our transgressions, and he has made and is making us whole in spirit, in our souls, and yes, miraculously also in our bodies. Not always as we please and wish, but as is fitting in your wise ultimate plan. We submit ourselves to you on this communion Sunday, this palm this uh, Good Friday, son, uh, Friday. We thank you for all you're doing and we're so excited even to talk about Sunday that's coming up. But now you have filled our hearts with your peace and that is wonderful. So Lord, look at us, be merciful to us, come to us with that wonderful presence 
that encourages us, that lifts us up, and that brings healing to us in our relationship with you and with one another, and make us ready to go into this world as those light carriers, because Jesus, the light, is within us. Yes, Lord, we can be the light and the salt of the earth. And so now bind us together in that spirit of love with one another. We want to be blessed in the tie that binds us together through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together. time, I invite you to read with me uh, the promise. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and remembering the death and resurrection of our Savior Jesus. Um, and so you disciples of Jesus, go now in the power and peace of God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen.